How's it going everybody, Nexus Core Productions here, and today we are reading from r slash malicious compliance. And from terrible HOAs to terrible neighbors, we just need to get that little bit of sweet revenge. Let's begin. If you like these kind of videos, leave a like, it helps me a lot, it helps me post more of these videos, it gives me motivation. So, like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's get on to the stories. Neighbor tells Grant he should mind his own damn business. That advice cost my neighbor most of his yard and his car. Gramps had just moved into a retirement park with a lot that backed into a country land that was a nature preserve. His backyard was basically non-existent, but he didn't mind as he got to look over the preserve. However, he did marvel at how his next door neighbor's backyard extended a good eight feet past his, giving neighbor a nice space back there. Gramps tried to be friendly with his new neighbors, exchanging phone numbers and the like. And one day, he noticed the next door neighbor was putting down expensive pavers that extended from his back door all the way to the old fence post that designated the preserve boundary. Gramps watched the neighbor yank the three rickety fence posts out of the ground and move them back an extra two feet into the preserve before putting them back in. Then, started to clear the land. Intending to gain himself more air for his pavers, Gramps used to work for the National Park Services as a young lad, so he thought he had better warn his neighbor of the consequences of his actions. So, he heads out back for a little chat. The neighbor is immediately defensive, and before Gramps says much, the neighbor tells him, You're new here. I've been here for ten years, and you need to mind your own damn business. Gramps decides not to press the issue. Nothing happens that year. But the following year, when most of the parks emptied out to head north for the summer, and the country comes back to check out on the preserves, Gramps notices them going back and forth behind his neighbor's house, and workers pulling out maps, and taking photos, and making phone calls. And soon more guys show up. Turns out the neighbor has moved the post several times over the years, and in reality his backyard is supposed to be even smaller than Gramps' backyard. To make it worse, the neighbor puts pavers in the back specifically to park both his golf cart and his cherry red sports car back there for the summer. So the country will have to remove them before they can go do anything else. He tape a notice to the front door and leaves. Gramps goes over to read it and states that the neighbor was in violation of encroaching onto protected lands. He has 30 days to move his car, tear up the pavers, and pay a fine of $11,000. The damages and endangered species who inhabit the protected land as well within trespassing fees. Failure to do so within 30 days will result in the golf cart and car being towed and impounded. Pavers will be dug up and carted off at neighbor's expense, and the fine will be increased for every additional day past the deadline. 30 days comes and goes, so a week after that, Gramps has quite the show as the first car and cart were towed. Pavers were dug up and hauled off, and the old fence posts and ropes were replaced with metal posts embedded and buried cement bases connected by steel cables. The whole process took several weeks to finish, but the preserves looked a lot more legit when they were done. A few solar cameras were installed so the country could monitor the wildlife and encroach. Mostly, meanwhile, other notices that were taped to the front door of the neighbors' houses. By November, the snowbirds were flooding back into the park, including neighbor. That was Gramps' second show of the summer as neighbor reads all the notices, digging down until he reads the first one, then runs out back and starts screaming and cussing up a storm before running back to his car to dig out his cell phone so he can call the county and find out where his car and cart were. Gramps stays indoors to avoid the guy as he's frantically trying to unload his car, turn on his water and electricity, and get the AC and toilets going. And all the while trying to get someone at the county to pick up the phone and give him some answers. He finally gets a live person and proceeds to scream at them while on speakerphone about his car and cart. 
So the call keeps getting kicked to another person because who wants to help a screamer? Basically, neighbor is told to come to the county office to get this straightened out. Three days later, neighbor catches Gramps outside and asks if, if he was here when the county stole his car and destroyed his backyard. Gramps said he was. And neighbor says, well, why didn't you call, call me when you saw them putting notices on my door? You had my number up north. Gramps says he had thought about it, but figured neighbor would prefer him to mind his own damn business. So we decided against it. And that is my, that guy is absolutely my hero. Because, ooh, I would have done the exact same thing. I love this subreddit because, well, I relate to it so much. I've done quite a few of these, and it's hilarious seeing people's reactions to them. On to the next story. And this story is called, Call the HOA because my yard is devaluing your house. Alright, I'll have it cleaned by the inspection date. This is a story of my mother's. She has always been incredibly hard-headed, but this sticks out a lot from my teenage years. Once a year, she always had us pull everything out of the garage. Lots of boxes, my mom has a concerning amount of possessions so we could go through it and clean and reorganize. This particular year, the couple who owned the house across from us were in the process of selling their house, unhappy with my mother's unsightly driveway. Covered in boxes, soiling their good image, they call the HOA. By the time my mother received the letter, the mess had been put away, but they just decided to get her on a few other complaints such as the bikes against the side of the house and the patchy gravel. She had two weeks to have everything cleaned up to standards. Petty and easily frustrated, my mother knew immediately who to call since the couple had come over and told her flat out with their renovations that they were selling the house for way more than the other houses in the neighborhood and would appreciate if she respected that by keeping her properly on par. For the next two weeks, every box from that garage was in our driveway, the couch, and the living room TV came next. This was in early summer, so it was perfect weather to sit in your yard with your short and your sports bra. And my mom made sure to wave and smile every time they, they brought someone over for a showing. The final step came at the end of the two weeks, though. After the yard had been cleaned up and cleared by the HOA, my mom went to the local Walmart and bought a for sale sign. She wrote about a quarter of the ridiculous asking prices on it and finished off with a big sold written across the front and stuck out in our yard. No clue what they ended up selling their house for, but it sat empty for a while, so I'd assume it was but it was below offer. TLDR, don't tell my mom she's evaluating your house or she'll go far out of her way to do so. All while complying, complying with the HOA. Oh my god. I feel like this would be something my mom would do, honestly. Because uh, she's kind of the same way. That's a uh, awesome mother you have there sir anyways that would be it for this video if you guys liked um think of subscribing and this video is brought to you by cinch gaming they make amazing amazing sc scuff con i guess you call them scuff controllers uh they're not actual scuff controllers but they're like them they're amazing uh they make Ener they make energy drinks. L use the link in my description below to get 5% off any all purchasable items in the store. Thank you guys so much for watching. Nexus Core Productions, signing off. But the following year, when most of the park emptied out, when most of... Nothing happens that yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, the stroke. 
And while we were trying to get someone county to pick up the phone and give some 